Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance. From God our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Our text for our meditation this morning is taken from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels from Midian and Ephah and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. So far, okay. Dear Christian friends, has it hit you yet? You know what I'm talking about. This is the after Christmas letdown. The family is gone. Parties are over. We're back to work, huh? Back to school for one week. And maybe you have Christmas presents to enjoy, but there's also Christmas bills to go along with some of that too. And just kind of a dark month. It is the darkest month of the year. It's cold. I know growing up, the second week in January was just a terrible week. Historically, it's just freezing. And here we had a little taste of winter. This week looks a little bit warmer, but it's going to come back to. Well, even though January can be kind of a letdown, it doesn't have to be. Epiphany is a great opportunity. And so we're going to ask the question, does January have to be such a dark month? And the answer is no. Not in the view of the glory of the Lord. And no, not in the view of the joy in our hearts. Let me take you back into our text. It is remarkable. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light in kings, the brightness of your dawn. What is remarkable about these words that were written 2,700 years ago was that Isaiah couldn't see any of it. Not with his eyes. Things were a little rough. He was surrounded by people who didn't believe the same thing he did. Nations are what you call Gentiles. We sling this word around, Jew and Gentile, a lot, and if you're not familiar with it, I guess it's kind of confusing. A Gentile is anyone who's not a Jew. That'd be me and most of you. I think there's only one member of our church who can trace back her heritage as a Jew. And it doesn't matter, of course. God loves everyone. Jesus died for the sins of the world. And yet when you read nations, this is the goyim. This is all the other people that surrounded the Jewish people. They had their own gods made by hand. They were stone or wood. They didn't really do anything, and yet people bowed down and worshipped them. And the darkness that I spoke of in the children's message, that was very real. The fear that went along with worshiping these gods and that any little thing I did, maybe the gods are angry with me. And that sounds ridiculous and you pour it over into American society and you're right back then. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's just stick with the context here. Isaiah wrote these words. God's people were going into exile. And so these words had a lot of comfort because they knew that something better was coming. God's people were never completely in the dark because they always had prophecies like this from the prophet Isaiah. They knew what was coming. They knew that their God loved them, but the nations around them didn't. And so, 
you talk about who takes away darkness, you fast forward a couple years and Jesus is on the scene. Even though the light of the world was walking among them, they didn't know it. When the wise men walked into to Jerusalem and said, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? Everyone was really afraid. Because King Herod didn't like anything that got in the way of his rule. And sadly, a number of babies lost their lives, two years old and under, when King Herod couldn't find Jesus. There was real darkness around Jesus' time, even in a nation that should have known better. You look at the glory of the Lord that is covered here. The glory of the Lord rises upon you, and you kind of wonder what that means. It's mentioned 28 times in the Bible, if you can believe it. And the glory of the Lord was what Moses saw in the burning bush. The glory of the Lord is what surrounded the angels everywhere in Scripture, but over those fields in Bethlehem. And when you're looking for the, the highest picture of the glory of the Lord, it's not at creation. That was great. It's not at the destruction of the flood when God flexed his almighty arm. The glory of the Lord was brightest when Jesus walked the earth. He is the picture of God himself. In fact, when you look at the high priestly prayer in the Gospel of John, Jesus says that the glory of the Lord is now about to be revealed as he is about to give up his life. Right when things got the darkest, that's when Jesus says the glory of the Lord shines brightest because it was when God saved the world. I don't think there's anything more glorious than that, right? Well, are you in the dark? That's all that's left. I kind of covered in the introduction, you know, bills, lack of money, seasonal affective disorder is very real. You don't see the sun as much. How's it going? You might have some bad days ahead of you. I'd be lying if I said that every day was awesome for me. It's not. All of us have our ups and downs, and yet it's important to realize that just because you have a bad day, and it seems like the sun hasn't come up because it's been raining for the past week. It doesn't mean God's left. No matter what 2016 has waiting for you, your God will be with you. And I look at Epiphany and I see an opportunity. There are a lot of people that look at Christmas with dread. Not because they hate Christmas carols and the baby Jesus, but because of all the stuff that goes around with it. The light of Christmas is almost completely covered by a blanket of materialism and shopping and presents. And you can miss completely from Frosty the Snowman to Santa what exactly Christmas is all about. And if you're a part of a family that has to go through the scourge of divorce, seeing family can be miserable. Christmas is something to be endured and gotten through. And some people breathe a sigh of relief when it's over. And so Epiphany is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to see Christmas for what it is, just the theology, just what God says in the Bible with nothing else. Because last time I checked, there are no Epiphany sales. Not today. Maybe there should be, but yeah. It's free from all of that. It's beautiful. Because you have the light of the world come. And it came as your substitute. That baby that was born, if you read Galatians, he was born under law. Just like all of us. Except that where I fail miserably, Jesus keeps God's law perfectly. You know where you're weakest. That's where Jesus is strong. Jesus came as your substitute, not just to live in your place, but to die in your place too. The sins that you committed, sins that you will commit, Jesus paid for those when he died on the cross. So now there's nothing left for you but forgiveness. That good news, that light of the world removes fear, it removes doubt. You don't wonder if the reason your back hurts today is because God's mad at you because you're a lousy parent or a lousy spouse. Your back hurts because you have poor core muscles and you haven't done a sit-up in a year. You're getting old. 
you know that your God loves you. And he'll sustain your body because you need one until he calls you home. All those little aches and pains, all the ups and downs of life don't have any bearing and should not add one moment of fear. You don't have to say, I hope God loves me. You know he does because of epiphany, because of Christmas, because the Savior has been born to you. That is the glory of the Lord. So does January have to be a dark month? Not in view of the Lord's glory and not in view of the joy in our hearts. Let me take you to the next chunk of verses. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar. Your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels from Midian and Ephah. And all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. It's hard for us to say gold and incense and not say myrrh after it, right? When you read the Gospel of Matthew, you have the account of the wise men coming, right? And we think of those three gifts. We think of three kings, and yet do we know that it wasn't this huge stream of camels? We don't know how many. We just say three because there were three gifts. That's really bad intel, isn't it? You'd like to know a little bit more information, wouldn't you? Were there 50 of them? They've been traveling for probably two years. Probably more than just three guys out for a weekend getaway. It's probably a big deal. Well, you look at these and you look at this picture that he has, and this is even harder to believe. Not only were the Jews about to go into exile, but it was not a place where people brought great stuff. Solomon is long gone by now. And the wealth of the Jews was over. Israel was a political football field and frankly a battlefield when you look at a map between Egypt and Babylon. It was not a place where wealth came. And so you have this picture of epiphany, of the wise men coming, and that is only a partial fulfillment. Do you realize that when the sons and daughters are carried on the arm, you're thinking, where did they come from? They came from around the world. Max Kerr is the son of our congregation, and he's about to leave to go back to MLC. Actually, in just a few minutes. We won't be able to say goodbye to him, sadly. He has to take a flight. That's okay. But he is the son of our congregation, and there's all people like him around the world. This is something that we have a hard time imagining because unlike Isaiah, we like to see what's in front of our hands. Isaiah saw these words and did he see the New Testament church? Did he see Star of Bethlehem? What did he see when he looked? 2,700 years later, did he see the incredible mission work that would go on in China? So that a member of our church, I'm not going to mention her name because it's dangerous, sits among us most Sundays and enjoys the light of the gospel, and no one else in her family does. The darkness that is around the world in some places is so dark they cannot see anything. And the fear is striking. And so as programs, like the ones that our church body acts and performs on in other countries around the world, and God grants them incredible growth, it is awesome to see those sons and daughters come to us from around the world. The picture that you have here, the camel train, imagine I-40, backed up, bumper to bumper, and the bottleneck is Jonestown Road, and they're all trying to come into the parking lot of Star Bethlehem Lutheran Church so they can come for a Sunday morning 10 o'clock service. I'd say, don't worry, it'll be online later. But the picture, that's what he sees. This wagon train, this ridiculous load of semis that's bringing all the wealth of the nation in so that we can do ministry. So that they can give their gifts to the king of the universe. That's the joy that these wise men felt when they came because they have never seen anything like it. The Jews? Yeah, they should have known better. But the rest of the world? This is wild and crazy. That star was a beacon of hope. 
and it hasn't stopped ever since. And that's what we enjoy. That's what I enjoy as a Gentile who gets to stand in front of you and proclaim that light. Dear friends, does January have to be a dark month? No. Not in view of the glory of the Lord. And not in the view of the joy of our heart. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. We now